because of your word and your spirit we are changed oh the power of the lord is in this place oh the presence of the lord the presence of the lord is in this place oh the presence of the lord is in this place because of your word and your spirit we are changed oh the presence of the lord is in this place yes it is sing the healing of the lord the healing of the lord is in this place oh we thank you lord the healing of the lord is in this place and because of your word, because of your word, the healing of the Lord is in this place. Oh, the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is in this place. We thank you, Jesus. The glory of the Lord is in this place. Because of your word, because of your word, and your spirit. Oh, it's because of your word, because of your word. It's all because of your word, because of your word. It transforms our lives. Because of your word, because of your word. And your spirit we are changed Oh, the glory of the Lord Yes, Lord, and we're stepping in To a place of great anointing We're moving forward With the mantle of our God Oh, yes, we are We will be strong the face of persecution we won't back down for we know our God's with us sing that again church we're stepping in we're stepping in to a place of great anointing we're moving forward with the mantle of our God oh we will be strong in the face of persecution we won't back down for we know our God's with us oh and so this is our heart's desire oh fill us Lord fill us Lord with your holy fire oh Shekinah Shekinah Glory fills this tabernacle, and Lord fill every vessel with Your glory and Your anointing, oh God. Your honor in this place. Sing it again, Shekinah glory, Shekinah, oh glory. Fills this tabernacle, the Lord fills every vessel with your glory and your anointing, oh God. You're honored in this place, so have your way. And so let your power fall, sing it, let heaven come and fill this place. Oh, we receive it, we receive your will be done. Oh, Lord, have your Powerful, oh, let heaven come and fill this place. 
your fire fall Oh, let heaven come and fill this place Oh, we receive it now Declare, oh, your will be done One more time Let your power fall Your manifold, manifested presence. We believe, we receive all the promises of God. We thank you the season of famine is over and the season of breakthrough is here. We are hundredfold recipients. We're believing for a quick turnaround, Father, a quick movement of heaven in our behalf and we believe we receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. We receive it as a congregation for Promise of Life Church. We receive it individually for our families and our homes and our children and our loved ones. Father, we receive that mighty increase for Brother Jerry and his family and his ministry and all his offices in the different parts of this earth. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for harvest time. In Jesus' name, and we give you glory and we give you praise don't you love jesus so much tonight how good he is to us tell somebody i'm so glad you're here i'm so glad that we we're in a place to receive the word tonight and the spirit jesus told dad hagan that he was raising up he's raising up strong local churches who will flow with the word and the spirit hallelujah glory to god brother jerry has been waiting on the lord today fellowshipping in his presence and he is ready to go i don't think anything needs to be said i just want him to come and flow and do whatever he wants would you stand and welcome brother jerry thank you sir we love you thank you Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and just worship the Lord once again. Not get in a hurry doing it. Just lift your hands and bless the Lord. Thank you for his presence in this place. We thank you, Father. In your presence is fullness of joy. We tap into that joy for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We give you praise for all that you have done all that you are doing and all that you are about to do. We know that we are on our way to even better days than we've ever experienced before. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
for your goodness. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Craig leaned over to me a few moments ago and said, I sensed to my right, his right, an angel standing there. And the Lord told me that would happen today, that many of you will experience angelic visits during the service, after the service, and over the next few days. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister unto those who are heirs of salvation? Amen. I've had many angelic, angelic visitations over the years. Most of the time I didn't know that it was going to happen. And I wasn't aware that it happened until the Lord said, didn't I tell you? Think it not strange that you would entertain angels. Then I realized that was an angel that I just entertained. And many times, in fact, every time, it brought great deliverance. It brought, brought great breakthroughs in my life. I was I joined the team this morning down to, uh, for breakfast and had a glass of orange juice and just had a visit with the team and, and uh, Jeff and May and uh, fully intended to go to lunch with Pastor today. And when I got back up to my room, I just sensed the Lord saying, I need you in my presence all day. Well, he didn't have to tell me twice. I love being in the presence of God. Anybody like being in the presence of God? I think it was Smith Wigglesworth that said one time, I'd trade everything, all the gold and the silver in the world to be 10 minutes in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I've had a wonderful day. You're going to have a wonderful night because of it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So let's just lift our hands and let's say this together. Heavenly Father, we welcome your presence. And we welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we welcome the presence of angelic beings. If you so desire, we welcome them and we receive them. For we know that they are ministers of us or for us. For our good. And they are ministers of, uh, for us for breakthroughs. And we're in the season of breakthroughs. So in Jesus' name, we receive them, we welcome them, and we rejoice in the fact that we know they're here already. And Lord, as we sang a few moments ago, have your way in this place tonight. Have your way in this place tonight. Everything we might have planned to do is now subject to change. We welcome your presence. We welcome your presence. In, in, interrupt, me in desire, interrupt me in any way that you desire. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just pray in the spirit for a few moments. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. So for our cost, he premended a mancaste. Elando corredisti pro macate. Uh, I'm impressed of the Lord to, to lay hands on all the ministers and their spouses before we do anything else. This, this is a time for an increase in the anointing of God. We all need to increase in the anointing. Hallelujah. It's going to take the anointing of God to destroy the yokes and the bondages that Satan has planned to bring on the earth and planned to use to attack the body of Christ but we have access to the anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Those of you that are in the audience, stretch your hands out toward them. Just pray in the spirit, if you will, please. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I lay my hands upon them, I fully expect the anointing of God that abides in me to flow into them and the anointing of God that is already abiding in them reach another level, a higher level, for we will need it in these days ahead. And tonight we receive it 
This is part of our breakthrough. This is part of our progressing, advancing, part of our promotion, moving into 2024. And we thank you for it. And we rejoice in it in Jesus' mighty name. So when I lay my hands on you, you just say out loud, I receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I receive it. In Jesus' name. Receive it 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 in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, as you go back to your seats, just pray in the Spirit for a moment. In the name of Jesus, receive it. In Jesus' name. Receive it 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 in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sir, Taylor, just a moment. A fresh anointing is falling upon you. The anointing of the psalmist and new songs will be birthed in the spirit and flow out of your spirit. Songs that will bring in the presence of God. Songs that will cause the weary to become joyful the sick to be healed, the oppressed to be set free, a new fresh anointing in the office of the psalmist comes on you now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He already brings the presence of God in the place, but it's going to get to the place in this church where people walk in and they won't be able to stand in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in his presence, his fullness of joy, and in his presence, the avenger is stopped and stilled. You may come in with heaviness in your heart, but when you walk through the door, it'll lift immediately and the spirit of joy will come on you. And there'll be times when you'll have to be carried back to your car because you'll be so drunk in the Holy Ghost and, 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 and enjoying His presence that you don't, want to, you don't even want to leave. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If it'll happen anywhere, it'll happen in this church. I said, if it happens anywhere, it'll happen in this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And a big part of it is because of what's happening in him tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shut your hands out toward him and pray in the Holy Ghost. What a great asset. What a great asset to a church, to a service, to the people of this church. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, that you're making it happen. You're doing it now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Spiritual songs and psalms and hymns and new songs will come to you in the night. Some nights you won't even be able to sleep because you're writing so fast. Hallelujah. And they'll not only be sung here, they'll be sung in parts of the country that you've never even been to. Hallelujah. And before long, they'll be like an anthem. And the body of Christ will sing them everywhere in the name of Jesus. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, receive it. In the name of Jesus, receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, receive it. In Jesus' name, receive it. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You are special to the Lord. 
You're special to this house. And because of it, God's got something special that he's arranging for you. And you've not voiced it too often and not many people know about it, but it is a desire of your heart that is about to come to pass. And you'll know that it's from God and you'll know that this word is true in the name of Jesus. So get ready. The Lord is working on something very special for a very special person. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a good shout. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm already having fun. Anybody else having fun yet? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We bless you. Hallelujah. 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 I heard the Lord say, there are businessmen and women in here tonight that God's about to take your business to another level and you won't be you won't be known any longer as just a businessman or woman, but a minister of finance. A minister of finance to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And if you'll continue to be faithful in it, there's no limit to where God will take you with it. Hallelujah. So think bigger. Believe bigger. Plan on doing bigger. O oh, ye ministers of finance, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're a businessman or woman, lift your hands and just praise God for it and say, I receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, go ahead and be seated, but don't turn your faith off. Hallelujah. Don't turn your praise off. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. I said to Pastor when we uh, came into the speaker's room a few moments ago that my intention tonight is to continue on what I began last night about the prophetic word that the Lord has given me for 2024. But all day long, I haven't been able to get my mind off breakthroughs. And so I'm going to cover what I didn't finish last night, and then I'm going to switch over and tell you what the Lord told me about breakthroughs today. Is that all right with you? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In fact, I can't wait. I got to tell you something. Now I better wait. Oh, okay. I'll just give you the first part of it. I wrote down at 10.21 a.m. this morning during my fellowship with the Lord. He said, my people aren't spending enough time in my presence. If they were, then they would already know what to do and how to do it. Didn't I say in my word, according to James chapter 4 and verse 8, Draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. Yes. And in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you know not of. And I looked that up in the message translation. Things that you could never uh, figure out on your own. Things that you could never figure out on your own. And then he said, so why do you wait and why do you try to work things out on your own? I'm here for you. I long to share with you my wisdom and with it bring you through and with it you will be brought through any and all adversity that you will ever experience and I will cause you to overcome every time. 
Come to me. Let me show you how much you mean to me. Let me lavish you with my goodness. I have the answers, and we will work together to bring victory, or bring the victory that you desire. Yes. So what I'm hearing the Lord say is we're not spending enough time in His presence. Yes. And we're all guilty of that. Yeah. Even as ministers, yeah. we get so busy working for God, we don't have time to be with God. And that becomes dangerous. Yes, Amen? Because then we start trying to make things happen ourselves. We, 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 de we determine, you know, as I said in one of the previous services, there is a way that seems right. And if you're not spending enough time with God, that's the way you usually go. But if there is a way that seems right, then there's a way that is right. Yes. And the way that is right is gained through fellowship with Him in His presence. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that after we get through with this uh, portion of the prophetic word that I began talking to you about last night. How many of you were here last night? All right, praise the Lord. Those of you that weren't, I assume they recorded it. It could be on YouTube or a live stream or somehow you might want to watch it so you can catch up with the rest of us. Amen. Amen. So, open your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4. And while you're turning there, I want to review something that we said last night. When in, in praying and seeking the Lord about what's on His agenda for you and me for 2024, the first thing He said to me, and He said it in a very stern voice, He said, tell the people it is a must, a must that they stay in faith. Stay in faith. Look at your neighbor and say, stay in faith. Number two, he said, remain focused on the promises of God. And number three, he said, don't allow anything to distract you that is happening in the world around you. And he said, now if they'll follow those instructions, then their 2024 will be a year of progression, a year of advancement, a year of promotion, and their highest expectations will be fulfilled. Now you can't go around saying, you know, God's going to fulfill all my highest expectations if you're not following the instructions. It won't be a year of advancement. It won't be a year of progression. And it won't be a year of promotion if you're not following the instructions. And that's the first thing he told me. And as I said, with a very stern voice, a seriousness to it. Tell them to stay in faith. <clears throat> Tell them to stay focused on the promises of God. And then number three, don't allow anything that's happening in the world around you to distract you. Yes, Amen. Distractions <coughs> are Satan's way of causing you to lose focus. Yes. And it's also his way of causing you to relax your faith. Yes. So these things are important. And then there's a promise that comes with it. If they will follow these instructions, then their year will be a year of progression, advancement, and promotion. And their highest expectations will be fulfilled. So why don't we go ahead and thank God in advance for that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want to uh, look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. And this is where he led me when he gave me this word. <clears throat> Beginning in verse... 15, meditate upon these things, give thyself holy, and that's W-H-O-L-L-Y, not H-O-L-Y. Meditate upon these things, give thyself holy to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Now, in order to understand what he's talking about, you're going to have to read 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. And even though he's writing to a young protege, he's writing to a son in the Lord who is a minister, a pastor, not everything in those instructions in 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy apply only to ministers. They apply to the body of Christ. So uh, you'll, you'll have to read these instructions that he gave, but I want to sum them up in three points. And that's the three points he gave me 
at the beginning. You'll find in here these three things. They may not be the exact wording, but it's implied. Right. Stay in faith. That's right. Number two, stay focused. Number three, don't allow anything that's happening in the world to distract you. So, the first thing we need to do is to meditate on those things. In other words, keep them in your mind. Keep them in your thinking. Somebody said, I can't, I can't meditate all day. Well, you seem to have no problem worrying all day. And worrying is meditating on what the devil said. So don't tell me you can't meditate. You do it all the time. The problem is you're meditating on the wrong thing. And I'm, I'm just saying, generally speaking, but you can meditate all day. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. I, I'm meditating all the time. In fact, that's the reason why my wife does not let me drive when she's in the car. <laughs> not only that, but it's less stressful when she drives. Amen. 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 Somebody asked me one time, said, Brother Jerry, don't you have a GPS in your truck? I said, yes. Well, why don't you use it? Because I didn't know where I was going. Well, why don't you use it? I said, that woman in there sounds too much like my wife. <laughs> she tells me how to drive when she's in there, and I don't want her telling me how to drive when she's not. <laughs> don't tell her I said that, okay? <laughs> so, so notice these instructions, and you can sum them all up. In these three points, once again, stay in faith, and I'll show you where you can see them in not exactly that same wording, but stay in faith, remain focused, and don't let anything that's happening in the world to distract you. Now, notice he said, if you'll meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them. In other words, commit yourself to it. Don't be a hearer of the word only, but a doer of the word. It's only the doer of the word that is blessed in their deeds. Amen. So it's not enough just to hear these things uh, and, 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 you know, and then go on to something else. Uh, that, that's that's a, a problem in the body of Christ. They come and, you know, and they, they listen and then they get ready to go to lunch and hope the preacher stops before the Baptist beats us to the restaurants. <laughs> and then they forget what they heard. Amen. That, that, that's not meditating and that's not giving yourself wholly to it. Yes, Amen. Amen. Give yourself wholly to it. Uh, commit yourself to it. Devote yourself to it. These instructions. And then notice he says, the result will be that profiting will appear to all. Now the word profiting is also translated progressing. Your progression, some translations use the word, your, your progress will be known to all. In other words, people will see that you are progressing. And that's important for people to see that we are progressing because that's one of the ways that we introduce them to the God that's causing us to progress. Amen. 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 Yes, so notice if you meditate on these things, you give yourself wholly to them. You practice them, you do them, you don't just hear it and move on, but you, you, you make a commitment to it, then your profiting will appear to all. Now, notice it says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and thou shalt hear, they shall hear thee. So notice, these are some stern instructions. Take heed unto yourself. Continue in these things. Don't play church with it. <laughs> Don't get religious minded with it. These are serious times, are they not? And we don't have time to play church anymore. We, we don't need three points in a poem anymore. We need the, the, the word of the living God. And we need to commit ourselves to it and determine that we're going to live by it every day of our lives 24-7. Yes. Amen. This is, this is not part-time Christianity. Yes. It's 24-7. Yes. Can you say amen? amen. Now, holding or, or stay in faith. Let's go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1. And you'll see 
this principle in these instructions that Paul told him to meditate on and give himself holy to. Look at chapter 1 and verse 19. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Holding faith. The Amplified Bible says, holding fast to faith. Holding fast to faith in absolute trust and confidence in God. Now, why, why would he tell Timothy and to us as well to hold on to your faith? Because it's possible to let go of it. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yes. I got that revelation all by myself. <laughs> Kenneth Hagin didn't help me on that, okay? If, if, the, if the instructions are hold to, hold to your faith, then it is possible to let it go. Now, another translation, the New Living Translation says, cling to your faith. Cling to your faith. The message translation goes on to say, there are some who by relaxing their faith have made a thorough mess of their lives. That, that's, that's pretty prevalent in the body of Christ right now. I, I know a lot of people that started out in faith, churches that started out in faith, ministers that started out in faith, and they let go. They allowed other things to tickle their ears. You know, uh, the, like, like a guy that you would know his name if I told you, but that's not important. But uh, he said from his pulpit many times, I heard him. That, that, that uh, nobody wants to hear that word of faith anymore. That movement's over. Well, that told me how little he knows about faith because it's never been a movement to start with. Amen. It's not a movement, it's a lifestyle. Yes. The just shall live by faith. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Yes. So if we don't need that faith message anymore, and it's just a movement and the movement's over, then you just told me, sir, I don't have any way to have victory anymore. That's right. So I'm not buying that. It's not a movement. Movements move. It's not a fad. Fad changes. They change. You know? I remember one time a, 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 a guy came up in a meeting that Brother Hope Copeland, Brother Hagen, and myself were in, some other ministers. And he had on a tie that had gone out of style in the 60s. <laughs> and, and one of the ministers said to him, hold on to that, it may come back in style. You know? <laughs> well, faith is not like an old tile you bought in the 60s. Yes, sir. You hold on to it because the just shall live yes. by faith. Yes. Amen? Amen? The just shall have their lives sustained by their faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't ever, don't ever fall for the lie that it's a movement and that movement is over. It's never a movement, never been a movement, never will be a movement. It's a lifestyle. And the command is, you shall live by faith. Amen. You are one of the just, right? Amen. So the just shall live by faith. So notice here, those who let go of it or they relax their faith, they have made a thorough mess of their lives. You have no idea how many Christians and ministers that I come in contact with that I know started out in the word of faith and let go of it, fell for some other message that sounded good. Have you ever noticed how uh, there are some preachers that come on the scene and make a big splash and everybody runs to their meetings because they draw a big crowd and a lot of fanfare and circus atmosphere and then after a while they fizzle out and you never hear about them anymore? That's tickling your ear. Amen. When one minister uh, that started his ministry in the Word of Faith, he, he, he got a hold of it listening to me and Brother Copeland and, he, and, he, and his church was in California. I won't tell you the city, but his church was in California. And he came to those early believers conventions that we did in Anaheim back there a long time ago, over 40 years ago. And he got a hold of the word of faith. And he took it to his community. And he started a church there. And he began preaching the word of faith. 
And boy, that church began to grow. And uh, I would go there every year to do a meeting for him. And every time I'd go, the church is getting bigger, larger crowds, and, and people were driving uh, long distances just to be in his church because of what he preached. Yes. Okay? And then one day, he called me, and he said, uh, I, I don't know what's happening. I'm, I'm losing people. Uh, my church is, is, is dwindling, and I don't know why. I said, well, send me some of your last messages and let me listen to them. So he sent me some recordings of about four weeks in a row of what he was preaching. I called him back and I said, I know your problem. You're not preaching faith anymore. You built this church on the word of faith and you've left it. That's why you're losing the crowds. That's why your church is dwindling. Okay? I said, why don't you get back to preaching what got you where you were? It'll take you where you want to go. Amen. 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 Now, he said, okay, you know, but I don't, I don't have any way of knowing that, you know, I've had people say, particularly young ministers, uh, Brother Jerry, I submit myself to you, speak into my life. When I do, they won't listen to me. Or they ignore it. I've lost a lot of friendships that way where they told me to speak into their life and when I did, they abandoned me. They didn't want to hear it. Amen. Uh, and anyway, this preacher, uh, I, I don't, you know, he said, okay, but I don't know that he did what I told him to do. So anyway, uh, he was in a, a, a meeting with a bunch of other ministers there in that area in California and one of them that was in the meeting called me and said, uh, did you talk to this pastor recently? I said, yeah, I did. He said, well, can I ask you what you talked about? Because he, he voiced it to some of us. And I, it didn't sound right to me. I just wanted to know if that's what you said. He said I said, well, what did he tell you? He said, Jerry Savelle called me and he wasn't sure that he wanted to preach the word of faith anymore and he asked me to give him some of my messages so I could help him uh, get in tune with what God was saying today. So I called him. I said, not only have you left the word of faith, you're a liar. What else have you been lying about? <laughs> that could be why you're losing people. You're not truthful. You don't have any integrity. What are you talking about? Oh, I heard what you said, or I was told what you said, and it's on tape. So don't deny it. So, you know, he'd left the word of faith, and, and as a result, he's not even in the ministry today. Just what the Bible said from the message translation. There are some who, by relaxing their faith, have made a thorough mess of their lives. That's exactly what happened to him. And he's just one in thousands that I know about around the world. Amen? So you don't ever want to relax your faith. And you certainly don't want to walk away from the word of faith. Amen. Amen. I don't know anything else, frankly. I, don't, I, I couldn't preach anything else because this is all I know. I came to the Lord in 1969 hearing the word of faith. And I've been on it for 54 years. I don't know anything else. Amen. And I tell people that invite me to come to their conferences, I say, send me a list of who else will be there. And if it's people I know that speak against the word of faith, I don't go. Why? Because it only brings confusion. I'm not, I'm not going to preach the word of faith to a group and some other guy come up behind me that doesn't believe in it and then tear it all down or attempt to tear it all down. That, that's not helping the body of Christ. Right. I'd rather just stay home. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll stay home and watch uh, Andy Griffin. Barney will make me laugh. <laughs> I get more joy out of that than following some unbelieving preacher. Yeah. Amen. 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 So you have to be protective of your faith. Amen. Protective of your faith. Amen. I remember back there in 1969, and I'm, I'm just a, 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 an infant in the Lord. I'm just learning. 
and I won't go into a lot of detail of it, but uh, Brother Copeland had come back for a second visit to the church that Carolyn grew up in and I was now attending. Our daughters were very young. Uh, I came to the Lord in 69. Our oldest daughter was born in 68. Our youngest daughter, Terry, was born in, in 69. So uh, I came to the Lord in February of 69. Terry was born in September of 69. So that's how young she was. So uh, Brother Copeland came in the early part, the second visit in the early part of 1970. So Terry was about uh, maybe 13 months old or something like that. And uh, they, they're both in a nursery. And we heard a, a, a scream, a child screaming. And the nursery attendant come running through the side door of the church and had Terry in her arms. And this nursery attendant was a registered nurse, had on a white uniform, but she was a member of the church and she volunteered to come and take care uh, of the infants in the nursery when we had special meetings. And so she come running in the side door with Terry in her arms and blood all over her white uniform, Terry screaming at the top of her voice. And I don't know what's happened to her. And the lady said, Brother Jerry, Brother Jerry. And of course, he got the attention of everybody in there. Interrupted Brother Copeland while he was preaching. I stood up when I saw she had my daughter. And I went to her. And I don't know what's happened, but Terry is screaming at the top of her voice. Blood's pouring out of the end of her fingers. And so uh, I took the baby and I, I, I turned to look at Brother Copeland to see what he was going to do and how he would react. Because if he'd have acted or reacted any other way, it would have, it would have been a, uh, it would have been detrimental to my faith. Because yes, this is the man that brought the word of faith to me, yes. you know, and, and I'm, I'm looking to see what he is going to do and how he's going to respond. Because I'd already heard him say things like, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm only moved by what I believe. Well, let's see if he really believes it. Okay. So I turned to him with a baby. And these were days when you had a lavalier mic with a cord on it and you could just walk so far. And he took that mic off and walked out to the front row where I was. And he laid his hands on Terry. And in about this tone of voice, in the name of Jesus, he don't even know what's happened yet. None of us do. In the name of Jesus, I command the pain to stop and the bleeding to cease. And Terry instantly stopped crying, laid her head on my shoulder and closed her eyes. And then he said to the congregation, now I'm not through preaching, pay attention to me. So I walked out and went to the men's restroom to wash the blood off of me and wash the blood off of her. And it was in the restroom where I then found out what had happened. Well, I still didn't know what had happened, but I saw the results of it. The nursery attendant came in and told me later. But these two fingers right here were cut off at this first joint. Now, this is a 13-month-old baby. Yeah. And these two fingers are missing. I could see the bone. I could see the, uh, I, I could see the nail root. This is my baby. Yeah. I would have rather somebody cut my arm off than, than see what I'm seeing. And, and uh, so I washed the blood off and then I, I had my Bible with me and I opened to Deuteronomy chapter 28, the blessings of Abraham. And I read one of those blessings out loud and I held my, I got Terry in one arm and I held my Bible up in the other. And I said, God, you said that one of the blessings of Abraham is blessed shall be the fruit of my body. <clears throat> this little girl is the fruit of my body. <clears throat> and then I turn to Galatians chapter 3, where Paul said, and if you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I held my Bible up. I said, God, I belong to Christ. I'm, I'm an heir according to the promise. And then I turn to the 11th chapter of Mark, the 23rd verse, where Jesus said, if you believe in your heart and not doubt, you, uh, you shall have whatsoever you say it. And I read all those scriptures to the Lord, holding my Bible up. Don't you know the Bible says in Isaiah, his word will not return unto him void. That's what I'm doing. I'm returning his word yes, to him. Yes, amen. It won't return void. It will accomplish that which he said uh, it set out to do. Okay. So I'm returning his word to him. 
And then I said, God, I believe you will restore my baby's fingers. In Jesus' name. And then I wrote it in the front of that book, in front of my Bible. I dated it. I put the time and I wrote the, the, the declaration that I made and then I signed it. The nursery attendant came in about that time <clears throat> and said, Brother Jerry, uh, I went back to the nursery and I found these on the floor and I didn't know what to do with them. And she handed me these two little fingertips. Can you imagine a 13 month old baby and you're holding the, her fingertips? And I, I, I sense fear trying to grip me. See, Satan comes immediately to steal the word. But I just read that morning for the very first time that morning before I went to the service, <clears throat> Jude 20. Praying in the Holy Ghost, building up your most holy faith. So I started praying in the Spirit. And, and the more I prayed in the Spirit, faith came, fear left. And I reminded the Lord of what I said again. I believe you will restore my baby's fingers. And then I took her uh, fingertips, wrapped it in a piece of tissue, and put it in my shirt pocket. This is not the time to run from the Word. No. Brother Copeland's not through preaching. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word. I went right back in there and sat down on the front row with Terry asleep on my shoulders. After the service was over, Brother Copeland came up to me and he said, Do you know what happened? I said, Yes, sir. And I showed him the fingertips. The nursery attendant told me, that Terry was crawling on the floor, and this nursery attendant was a very heavy set woman. And Terry was crawling on the floor, and she accidentally got her fingers under the rocking chair, and when the lady rocked, it cut him off. And I told Brother Copeland what happened. He said, What do you believe in? And I opened my Bible and showed him what I was believing, because I wrote it down. He said, Now, I advise you to take her to the hospital and get those fingers properly dressed. You can't leave them exposed like that. So we took her to the hospital and uh, they, they took us into the, the office of what they said was the top plastic surgeon in the state of Louisiana. When we went through his office, I noticed he had Buddha statues in his office. He was, he was uh, uh, an Asian man and uh, <clears throat> Oriental, uh, however the correct way of saying it. And uh, his name was Dr. Simon Wall. This is all documented. And when, I, when he looked at her fingers and examined them, he said, do you have the fingertips? I said, I do. I took them out of that tissue and handed them to him. He looked at them and then he said, there's nothing I can do with this. It got the nail root. It got the tissue. It got the nerve. He said, all I can do is take a skin graft from her hip, take a skin from her hip and do a skin graft. She'll never, those fingers will never be normal. They'll never be the right length. And he took my baby's fingers and walked over to a trash bin and threw them in there. Now, I'm not very old in the Lord. And I hadn't been sanctified yet. <laughs> He came this close from a knuckle sandwich. I mean, I reared back to hit him when he threw my baby's fingers in the trash. And Carolyn said, watch it. And I heard the Holy Ghost say, listen to your wife, because you're about to blow a miracle here if you get in strife. Okay. <clears throat> so I backed off. And I said, sir, you do what you can do and my God will take care of the rest. God will restore my baby's fingers. He said, sir, that's medically impossible. I said, maybe with your God, but not my God. My God's El Shaddai, the God in whom nothing is impossible. Now I notice you had a Buddha statue in there and I'm assuming that's your God. And as far as I know, I don't know a lot about your God, but I do know this. He's not capable of doing what my God's doing. All I know is, looks like to me, all your God does is just get uglier and fatter. I mean, you know, but my God is El Shaddai, the God in whom nothing is impossible. He walked over to Carolyn and said, your husband's in shock. She said, no, sir. 
We believe our God will restore our baby's finger. He said, it's impossible. I said, sir, you do what you can do and God will take it from there. Amen. So he took her in for surgery, took a piece of skin off her hip, did a skin graft, covered them up, bandaged them and said, keep her overnight. So uh, I said, Carolyn, you stay with her tonight. This is Brother Copeland's last service. I'm going back to hear him. And as soon as he's done, I'm coming right back here and I'm going to preach to you the best I can, word for word, what I heard because I want our faith to be on the same level. Amen. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. We don't want one believe in one thing and one believe in another. Okay. <clears throat> There's power in agreement. Amen. So I did that. I listened to Brother Copeland and I drove right back to the hospital and preached the message to Carolyn. The next morning we took Terry home. And the doctor told us to bring her back in six or eight weeks and, uh, and, and he would examine her again. And during that six to eight weeks, we did absolutely nothing but feed our spirit the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word. Amen. We didn't turn on a television set. We didn't pick up a newspaper. And we didn't allow unbelief in our home. And there were many church members who came with good intentions, meant well, were sincere, but they were sincerely wrong. And one of them came, and I mean, this lady had been in the church for a long time, considered one of the pillars of the church. She come over and she said, Brother Jerry, I don't know why God cut your baby's fingers off. I said, lady, there's the door. My God didn't cut my baby's fingers off. Don't you ever accuse him of that again in my presence. Get out of my house. She left. And one of the elders came and said, uh, you know, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away or some other stupid thing. I said, there's the door. Get out of my house. We don't want any unbelief in here. We're believing for a miracle and you're not going to interfere with our miracle. Now, if you can't talk faith, get out of my presence. Now, I made them all mad. But right now, I don't have time to correct it and, you know, and be nice. I'll do that later after the miracle happens. And I did. I went to them and apologized for being, uh, you know, as, as uh, forward as I was at the time. But then I looked in the Bible and I saw Jesus doing that at Jairus' Jairus's house when his little daughter had died. And Jesus went in there to raise her from the dead. And all the people in there were bawling and squalling and, you know, and probably saying things like, we don't know why God did this. And, and, and he ran them all out. I thought, I'm in good company. Hallelujah. Because some of their descendants came to my house and I run them out. Amen. And then... Uh, the, the night before we were to take her back, six or eight weeks later, I believe it was eight weeks, we got a little card the, uh, that morning. We got a little card in the mail from Kenneth Hagen Ministries saying that he was going to be in Tyler, Texas for one night. Tyler was about 100 miles from our home. I have no idea how we got that card. I was not on Kenneth Hagen's mailing list. I'd never seen Kenneth Hagen. I only heard Kenneth Copeland talk about him, about how he learned a lot about faith from Kenneth Hagin. I believe an angel put that, yes, that card in my yes. mailbox. Yes. And when I pulled it out, I said, Carolyn, this is that man that Kenneth Copeland listens to. He's going to be in Tyler tonight. We need to go hear him because we need all the faith we can for this miracle, faith we can get for this miracle. So we drove to Tyler, Texas took a lady with us that was a member of the church and she was strong in faith and standing in agreement with us. And we, the three of us went over there. And all the way over there, we, we were talking about the miracle that we were about to see, the miracle that was about to take place. And we, we said, as we pulled up in front of that little hotel downtown Tyler, Tyler Texas, only the ballroom only held about 80 to 100 people. And when we pulled up to that hotel, we said out loud, we will have a front row place, a seat, front row seats. I want to hear Kenneth Hagin. I want to look him in the face. I don't want to miss a word he has to say because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. 
So when we walked in the, the, the hotel and went to the room where they told us the meeting was, a man met us at the door and said, I'm sorry, folks, the place is full. We don't have any more chairs. And I said to them, it's the first time I got to use the phrase, I'm not moved by what I hear. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he just looked at me. I said, I'm not moved by what I hear. And we turned to one another and said, we said we're going to have a front row seat and we will have a front row seat. He said, I'm sorry, sir, there are no more seats and, and there's no place to put any more seats. I said, I'm not moved by what I hear. In a little while, a guy come and tapped him on his shoulder and said, uh, we found three more chairs. He said, but the only place we have room for them is in front of the front row. <laughs> Kenneth Hagin's preached to me this close. Wow. He couldn't even move without, without stepping on my toes. My God, God's the God that's yes. more than enough. Amen. Yes. He not only gave me a front row, he put me in front of the front row. I mean, Kenneth Hagin couldn't move. He preaching right at me. And by the time he got through with me, I was higher than a Georgia pine tree. I didn't even need a car to get back to Shreveport, Louisiana. I was flying high in faith. Hallelujah. Took her to the doctor the next morning. He cut the bandages open and his first words were, my God. I said, what is it, doc? He said, look, they're, the fingers are back. The nails are back. It's a miracle. I said, no, sir, not your God. My God. Hallelujah. My God. He told me that he was going to Baton Rouge the next morning to a uh, conference where he was the keynote speaker to all of his colleagues. He said, do you mind if I share this testimony? I said, help yourself. Wow. He got born again over it. He told his wife about it. She got born again over it. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, my point in telling that story, not to spend a little more time than I had planned to, but notice it would have been very easy to let go of my faith particularly with what other Christians were saying. Sometimes when, when you need a major breakthrough in your life, some of the worst people to be around is unbelieving believers. You have to be selective about who you hang with, so to speak. Amen? My, the people I hang with are people of faith. I, 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 you know, I can be around anybody. But the people that I'm closest to are people of faith, people that talk faith, people that believe for the impossible. Amen. They don't try to talk you out of it. I've never one time in, in I've, I've been in the ministry 54 years and uh, I've known Kenneth Copeland uh, 57 years. And now one time in all these years has Brother Copeland ever said, no, Jerry, um, you're getting a little far out there, son. I, I can't get an agreement with you on that. Not one time. I said, Brother Coburn, agree with me. What are we agreeing on? I'll tell him. Praise God. Let's get it. Let's do it. Amen. Not one time has he ever said, uh, now you, uh, you're stretching my faith there, son. <laughs> no, I, I only have people agree with me that I know know how to agree. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you still here? Yes. Let your neighbor say, that's good preaching. Are you listening? Yes. The point once again is hold on to your faith. Yes. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. Yes. Sometimes you have to keep your visions to yourself, yes. your dreams to yourself. Yes. Not everybody is as excited about it as you are yes. and not everybody believes it's possible as you do. Yes. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Let's better get on to number two. I've spent too much time on number one. It's your fault you're pulling it out of me. Now listen to this. Before we go to number two. <laughs> Colossians 1, If you continue in faith, continue in faith, grounded and settled, that's the way you need to become where your faith is concerned. Grounded and settled to the point that nobody can talk you out of it. First Timothy chapter 1, in the latter days, some shall depart from the faith. 
Does anybody believe we're in the latter days? Yes. Have you noticed anybody departing from the faith? Yes. yes, tons of people. So he said, once again, holding faith. Now, number two, remain focused on the promises of God. Let's look at 1 Timothy 1 once again and go down to verse 4. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Now, let me unscramble that a little bit. Read it to you from the Passion Translation. Do not follow the era of deceptive doctrines nor pay any attention to cultural myths or traditions. Let me read that again. Do not follow the era of deceptive doctrines, nor pay any attention to cultural myths or traditions. The word myth is defined as they serve to explain the world's view and accept it as truth. Paul says, don't follow myths. It's, 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 uh, it's the world's view that is accepted by the world as truth. And he said, don't follow that. Why? Because it'll, it'll take your focus off the promises of God. Did you notice, has anybody noticed but me, that the world and God don't agree on anything? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So I have, to be, I have to be careful. Your eyes your eyes and your ears are the gateways to your heart. Yes. Proverbs 4 says, protect your heart. Guard your heart. Yes. Be careful what you watch. Be careful what you see. Amen. <clears throat> Be careful what you hear. Amen. And who you listen to. Yes. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Is this 90 proof tonight? <laughs> I think I need a little stronger tonight. It's honey and water. Honey and water. Honey and water. You have to clarify everything these days. Woo, hallelujah. I feel good. <laughs> okay, this helps soothe my throat. So don't follow myths. Don't follow uh, the era of deceptive doctrines and don't pay any attention to cultural myths or traditions because they will cause you to lose focus. Now, this was a major problem in the church of Galatia. Listen to what Paul said, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? He, call, he called it in the King James that they had become bewitched. Now the message translation says, have you taken leave of your senses? <laughs> you foolish Galatians. Have you taken leave of your senses? It's obvious that you no longer have the crucified Christ in clear focus. So there was a problem there. That's the reason he wrote the letter to them. They were losing focus. If you lose your focus on the crucified Christ, you'll also lose your focus on his promises. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. So it's very important that we stay focused on what God has promised. Can anybody say amen? amen. Now, number three, refuse to be distracted by what's happening in the world around you. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Remember these instructions, we are to meditate on them, give ourselves wholly to them, so that our progress will be obvious to all. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 3. Don't be distracted. Verse 1, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Anybody believe we're in the last days? Yes. Anybody notice perilous times? Yes. Okay, perilous times shall come. The Amplified Bible says, times of great stress 
and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. Times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. But notice there's not the word impossible in there. They're not impossible to deal with. They're not impossible to bear, just hard. Anybody notice that some of the things you've been going through lately are hard? Not impossible, but hard. Now, verse 14 is the solution. Look at that. Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. <clears throat> Continue thou. <clears throat> In the things which you have heard and which you have learned and things which you have been assured of. Now I know that your pastor preaches the uncompromising word of God in this church. Amen. Does he not? Amen. Has anybody learned anything? Yes. Anybody heard some truths that have changed your life? Yes. Then Paul says continue in them. Yes. Continue in them. Continue in them. Continue in them. Not for a few weeks, but for the rest of your life. They're life-changing principles to be applied to your life on an ongoing basis. So he says, the way that you deal with the things that are happening in the Word that create stress and trouble that are hard to bear, hard to endure, is you just continue in the things that you've heard, that you've learned, that you've been assured of, that you know are the Word of God. Amen. Just continue in it and you will overcome every attack of the adversary. You will overcome every troubled, every stressful situation that you're confronted with. But the point is you must continue. Can you say amen? amen. Continue. Hallelujah. Has anybody ever made the New Year's resolution? I'm going to start eating properly and I'm going to exercise. Be honest. Anybody ever made that resolution? How long did it last? If I'd kept that resolution when Mr. Universe was my personal trainer... I'd look like him. <laughs> but as soon as he left my house after two weeks and went back to Los Angeles, California, I went to the nearest Mexican restaurant I could find. <laughs> they all know me in there. Hey, Brother Jerry. Uh, they said, about to hand me a menu. I said, forget the menu, bring everything on page one. I'm hungry. <laughs> I ate like a horse. Amen. I didn't continue. I started. He didn't say, start the things. And when you get tired of it, go to something else. No, continue. Continue. Dennis Tenorino, who was a former Mr. Universe, and I had the privilege of mentoring him. And he became a full-time minister before he went home to be with the Lord. And he, he wanted to come and set up a training program for me. He said, this is a program that, that you can do in your room. And if you have a gym in the hotel, you can go down and do this. And he set up an entire program. And then he flew to, from Los Angeles to Fort Worth. And I met him based back in the days before 9-11 when you could meet people at the gate. And I'm standing there at the gate waiting for him to arrive on an American Airlines flight from Los Angeles. And when he walked out the door, he had on this bright red T-shirt. Dennis was like this. You, you don't become Mr. Universe, you know, if you don't look like that. Okay. And I mean, it started down here and went up like this. He had on a bright red shirt, T-shirt, on the front of it, Super Bodies by Tenorino. And everybody in the airport stopped and gawked at him. I mean, you, you couldn't help it. I mean, this, this guy, 22 and a half inch bicep, that's bigger than my thighs. <laughs> and he walks off the plane in a super body t-shirt. And he's originally from New York 
and he never lost that New York accent, yo, brother Jerry. <laughs> Been looking forward to being with you, man. He said, I brought you something. And he had one of them red t-shirts. <laughs> and he threw it at me and said, yo, brother Jerry, put it on, call things to be not as though they were. <laughs> Said you're a smart Alec. <laughs> so I put my super body t-shirt on. Everybody's gawking at Mr. Universe and laughing at Pee Wee Herman. You know. I felt like I had a mini dress on. I mean, Dennis just reached up to shake hands with me, and I could hear the threads in that t-shirt. Back off, Dennis, you're about to split us here. You could put two more sets of arms in my t-shirt. He said, uh, we're going to start at 6 o'clock in the morning with your program. I've got it all designed for you. I said, what are we going to do? He said, we're going to do some stretching exercise, and then we're going to get into the exercise. I said, what are we going to eat? He said, I brought you some wheat germ. I said, no. <laughs> what are we going to eat, Dennis? He said, I've got some, some supplements. No, Dennis, what do we eat? <laughs> Nothing sounded good so far. He put me on that program for two weeks. I mean, the first day, I looked forward to it. And before he got there, I went to uh, the Nike store and bought all the latest Nike attire. You got to look good when you're working out with Mr. Universe. You can't come in there in a pair of cut-off blue jeans. You got to look good. And I went down and bought all this stuff. I turned my, half of my garage into World Gym, bought all this equipment. I can hardly wait for Mr. Universe. It's not every day. Mr. Universe wants to be your personal trainer. Yeah, I can hardly wait. Got up. I beat the alarm up the next morning. I put on my Nike stuff. I walked into the den there, and Mr. Universe is lacing up his tennis shoes, gave me a smile, which should have given me a clue. This is going to hurt. <laughs> Boy, he put me through it that day. And then gave me wheat German supplements. <laughs> he said, we'll do it again in the morning, Brother Jerry. We're going to get up at 6 o'clock. I said, okay. I went to bed, set the alarm. 6 o'clock, I never heard the alarm. <laughs> I never heard that alarm. And I felt a foot in my back. And it was Carolyn's. She said, turn that stupid alarm off. I reached over to do it, and my arm wouldn't work. I said, Carolyn, pray, I'm paralyzed. <laughs> she put her foot in my back and kicked me out of bed. I can't even put on my Nike stuff. Carolyn had to get up and help me put on. Everything hurt. My arms hurt. My legs hurt. My hair hurt. Everything hurt. And I walked in there, and there's Mr. Universe. And the first thing he said, no pain, no gain, Brother Jerry. No pain, no gain. I said, I must be gaining because I'm in some serious painting here. <laughs> Amen. Oh, he worked me. Dear Lord, he worked me. And he said, now I believe you got it down. It's time for me to go back home. I put him in the car. I drove him to DFW Airport. I went to the gate with him. I hugged him when he started to board the plane. I went by the window and watched the plane back up. I stood there and watched it go to the runway. I watched it take off. Then I got in my car and went to that Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Ate everything on page one. That's not what you call continue. I was inspired. Just like most of you get inspired over hearing the word. But you know, inspiration can leave before you get to the car. Inspiration's good, but if you don't give yourself wholly to it, then you won't continue. So what did he say? Continue in the things which you have heard and learned and been assured of. The Amplified Bible says, continue to hold to the things that you have learned and of which you are convinced. You know, there are things that I've learned and I learned them 54 years ago that I cannot be talked out of. I'm convinced. And some of the best have tried to talk me out of it. I'm convinced. 
You know how you become convinced? You apply it and watch it work. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You apply it and watch it work. Continue. The Amplified says, continue to hold to the things that you have learned and of which you are convinced. And the message says the reason why is because difficult times are ahead. <laughs> difficult times are ahead. So these three principles that the Lord told me to share with the body of Christ going into 2024. Number one, it is imperative that you stay in faith. Number two, stay focused on the promises. And then number three, do not allow anything that is happening in the world to distract you. <coughs> Lift your hands and say, I give myself wholly to this. <coughs> I commit to it. I'm not a hearer only, I'm a doer. Now notice the promise. He said if Timi Timothy would do these things, then his profiting or his progress will be seen of all. And one of the reasons why God wants you to progress and advance and experience promotion is so that it gets the attention of others. So that they finally come and say, how are you doing this? Where's all this coming from? And you can say, it's the God I serve. It's his blessing on my life. It's his favor on my life. Would you like to know my God? Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a good shout if you receive it. All right, that's sermon number one. Hey, the doors are locked. You're not going anywhere. No, I'll, I'll try to keep this short. But it, it's, it's uh, I've had it on my heart all day. And I, 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 I feel that I would do you an injustice if I didn't share it with you. Because it has to do with your breakthrough. I, I, I was asking the Lord about it. I said, why do you want me to uh, continue talking about the breakthrough? He said, because they, most of them need a breakthrough before they can enter into 2024. How I many of you, and we, we, we settled that uh, on Sunday, that this is the season of the breakthrough. So how many of you are, are believing that your breakthrough is on the horizon, praise God, that you're, you're closer to it now than you've ever been, praise God. Okay, so wouldn't you like to have the breakthrough as you prepare to enter into 2024? Okay, now let me go back and read once again what I read at the beginning what the Lord said to me this, after, this morning. My people aren't spending enough time in my presence. If they were, then they would always know what to do and how to do it. Didn't I say in my word, James 4, 8, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things which you know not of. And I wrote in the message translation or from the message translation, things that you could never figure out on your own. That's what God will share with you. And then he said this, so why do you wait and why do you try to work things out on your own? I'm here for you. I long to share with you my wisdom, which will bring you through any adversity that you will ever experience and will cause you to overcome every time. Come to me. Let me show you how much you mean to me. Let me lavish you with my goodness. I have the answers. And we will work together to bring the victory that you desire. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 5 for a moment. Everybody have time for this? Yes. Ephesians chapter 5. If you don't, I'll, I'll just preach it to my team. They're not going anywhere without me. I got to, I got to get it. I got to get it into somebody. I'm full. I got to have an outlet. You know? Amen. Ephesians 5, 18. And most of this, I'm just going to read it to you. Okay. So for the sake of time, Ephesians 5, 18, Paul says, be filled with the spirit. In the little Greek, be filled is actually the continuous present tense, giving this verse the meaning of be continually filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It's not a one-time event or experience. 
just like you may have filled your automobile up with petrol, gas, fuel this morning, but nobody thinks that you won't ever have to fill it up again. You can just go so far on a tank of gas, and then you have to refill. That's the way it is where the Holy Spirit is concerned. The initial filling came when you invited the Holy Spirit into your life, and you remember that moment. I remember it. February the 11th, 3 o'clock in the morning, standing in my living room, looking out the window. And I said, Lord, Jesus, be my Lord. And I received my salvation and was immediately filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately. Speaking of the tongues. In fact, I couldn't stop speaking in tongues until 7 the next morning. I stood there and prayed in the Spirit for four hours. And when I stopped, I turned and my wife and my mother-in-law were sitting on the sofa, both crying. I walked over to Carolyn. I said, guess what happened to me? She said, we know. I said, well, how long have you been sitting here? She said, well, about 3.30 this morning. I noticed you weren't in bed. And I got up to see where you were. And then I heard this noise in the living room. And I saw you were being filled with the Holy Spirit. I called Mom and said, you got to come see what's happened to Jerry. And that was my initial filling with the Holy Spirit. Okay. But hey, 54 years later, God didn't create, design us to operate of the rest of our lives on that initial feeling. That was the starting point. So this verse says, be continually filled with the Spirit. Can you say amen? amen. Now, once again, it's not a one-time experience. We are to be continually filled. Each encounter with the Holy Ghost is unique and powerful. In the book of Acts, the early church disciples experienced the initial infilling of the Holy Ghost, recorded in Acts chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. But later the Bible tells us that after Peter and John were released from the authorities for preaching Christ, they went among the brethren. They went among the brethren and shared with them what had happened, and they all began to pray. And this is found in Acts chapter 4, verses 29 and 30. And the next verse says, verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. I thought James and John, uh, Peter and John got filled in Acts chapter 2. But notice, they got filled again. Yeah. Yeah, amen. They got filled again. How many of you have been filled again? Yes. If you haven't, this is vital to your breakthrough. Yes. Keep being filled. Keep being filled. Keep being filled. Notice they were filled again. God wants us to continually be filled with the Spirit, which will help us to become more sensitive to His leading, and it will also cause us to live a more victorious lifestyle. It also entitles us to become engulfed with God's presence, which is a vital key to experiencing breakthroughs, the breakthroughs that you're believing for in your life. I'm going to use that word again. It entitles us to be engulfed with His presence. The Bible tells us that there is, in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, a refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. A refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. The Amplified Bible says that when we are experiencing times of refreshing that come from being in His presence, it causes us to also, according to the Amplified Bible, to experience recovery from the effects of heat and reviving with fresh oil. So in the presence of God, there comes a refreshing. A refreshing. How many of you could use a refreshing? Amen? A refreshing. And, and it, the refreshing is designed to enable you to recover from the effects of heat and reviving with fresh air. The phrase recovering from the effects of heat is referring to the struggle, the pressure, the torment of a fiery trial that you've been experiencing. Hallelujah. 
Anybody been through some fiery trials? Or would you like to recover from the effects of the heat? That's what being in the presence of God will do. It will produce a refreshing, and the refreshing will bring a reviving and a recovery from the effects of heat. Amen. Amen. Recovering. What does this mean? Recovering means to regain or to obtain or, or to obtain that which was lost. It also implies to be compensated for your loss. Oh, I like that. When God causes you to recover, He doesn't bring you back to where you were. He compensates you for your loss. And, and, and re restoration in God's system, minimum is twice fold. Minimum is twice fold, potentially sevenfold. Book of Proverbs says, if you catch a thief, make him pay you back sevenfold. Amen. So just how much do you want? Amen. I mean, if, if somebody ran into your car and you had to take them to court and they were saying it wasn't their fault, but you had evidence and you proved that it was their fault, and, and the judge agreed with you. Are you just going to walk out and say, see there, I told you it wasn't my fault. It was his fault. Is that the end of it? No. Get paid for damages. Yes, sir. Amen. That's, right. That's recovery in God's view. He will stop the attacks of the adversary and he will make him pay for what he put, he put you through. As much as sevenfold. Hallelujah. So... It's a year of the maximum. Why not go for sevenfold? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the Bible says in Job 42.10, the Lord turned the captivity of Job, also gave Job twice as much as he had before. But notice how this, this uh, restoration and remuneration came to Job when he prayed. When he prayed. When he got into the presence of God, when you pray, you get into the presence of God. And then the message says, after he prayed, God restored his fortune and then doubled it. Amen. Amen. So his breakthrough came after being in the presence of God. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Being engulfed in the presence of God is where you find the answers and the solutions that you need to experience the breakthrough that you are believing for. I've learned in my own personal walk with the Lord that the quickest way to get in the presence of God and the quickest way for me to become engulfed in His presence is praying in the Spirit. Amen. Praying in the Spirit. Yes, Amen. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, that he that prays in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Yes. Well, if you're speaking to God, sounds like to me you'd be in his presence. Yes. So praying in the spirit, I say, is the, the, the Bible way of getting in the presence of God. And if you pray enough in the spirit, you will become engulfed in his presence. Hallelujah. 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 Engulfed in his presence. You know, don't, don't just, you know, go in there and, you know, a couple of shundas and a howdy doody. Pray enough in the spirit that you sense the presence of God. And once you sense it, keep praying in the spirit and become engulfed in the presence of God. Now that's where answers and solutions come from. Can you say amen? amen. Trust me, that's, that's the way I've done it all these years. And it's worked and will continue to work. Praise God. Hallelujah. So once again, one of the Bible ways of getting in the presence of God, being engulfed with the presence of God is by praying in the spirit. Now engulfed in the presence of God literally means to be immersed or to be completely absorbed, to be covered up and consumed by his presence. A number of years ago, <coughs> excuse me, um, we had a, a Bible school there in, in our uh, at our ministry headquarters, 
And people came from all over the country, some from other countries as well. And uh, uh, we, we, my first year students were basically just come to just get a, a, a good uh, foundation in the Word of God. Second year students were men and women that were called to full-time ministry. So when I was home, I would spend an hour with my first year students, then I'd spend three hours every day with my second year students preparing them for full-time ministry. So one day, uh, the Lord impressed upon me to go to my, uh, Carol and I had a, a lake house on Lake Granbury, which was about less than 40 miles from Fort Worth. And the Lord impressed me to go and, and spend the day there. And so I got down there and, and uh, I just went to the kitchen and made a cup of tea and put my Bible and my notebook out. I always, always have a notebook. Why? Because I'm expecting to hear from God. I don't ever go before the presence of God that I don't have a notebook or something to record. But for me, I, I like writing it out longhand and then we can type it up or whatever later. So I always, uh, I have my Bible and I have usually a legal pad or a notebook. And I, I will say, now Lord, your word says, I'm one of your sheep and your sheep hear your voice. So I'm expecting to hear your voice today. That's the reason I have this legal pad. I'm expecting to hear your voice. And so as I was sitting there and, and, and I endeavored to get in his presence by praying in the spirit first, before I, before I started reading scripture or whatever, I just prayed in the spirit for a while. And then when I sense his presence, then I continue to pray in the spirit because I want to be immersed. I want to be engulfed. I want, I, want, I want to be completely absorbed in his presence. Okay? And that's exactly what happened to To the point, I shook. I mean, I, I shook. And, and I get up and walk away from the table in there, and I shook all day. And so I called back home, and I, I, I told our director in the Bible school, I said, tell the students to be at, be at the, the school tonight. I have, I, I have been in the presence of God and I have something to say to them. And, and then I told uh, someone in the office, uh, contact other ministers in town and tell them to come because there, there's something going to take place tonight. I've been, in, I've been engulfed in the presence of God. And I shook all the way. 30 miles, I shook all the way. I'm holding the steering wheel like this. Wow. And when I got there, I mean, the power of God was so strong. I mean, it was so strong. Jeff, you remember that? It was so strong in there. And the Lord said, go another night. Yeah. So I went back. As soon as I got out of that service, I, got, I went, drove back down to the, the lake house and, and uh, I sat at that table again and began praying in the spirit. And I prayed most of the night in the spirit. And the Lord said, call him back and tell him to come another night. So we had them all in there again. And then they, we just went to another level that night. Then the Lord said, go pray and get in my presence again. I went back down to the lake house. I, I went into the, the kitchen there. I prayed in the spirit most of the night. And the Lord said, call everybody you know. Tell Carolyn to call everybody she knows. Tell Joe and Joyce to call everybody they know. And get kids in the service tonight. Yep. I'm going to move on the children tonight. And, and boy, the place was packed out. In fact, Carolyn called Brother Copeland and Gloria. And, and they came. And, and their children came and their grandchildren came. And, and it was like that. I mean, the place was packed full of kids. And boy, the, the, when I walked in there, I said, God is going to move on the children tonight and the children are going to do the ministering. And boy, it hit. I mean, the moment I said that, Kenneth Copeland's granddaughter, yeah. Kelly Copeland's little girl, one of her little girls, the anointing of God come on her so strong. She just went around laying hands on people, stacking people up all over the place. And she was crying so hard she could hardly contain herself. And finally, she walked out of the auditorium and went into the women's restroom uh, to, to wipe her face. The tears were just flowing. The presence of God was so strong on her. And there was a lady knocked on the door 
and, and said, can I come in? She said, yes. She said, are you the little girl that's praying for everybody? Yes, ma'am. Well, pray for me. And she laid her hands on her, and that woman nearly spent the night in the restroom. She died out under the power of God. And, and the little girl come out just crying, and we had a tremendous move of God. Amen. We had a breakthrough. Why? Because I was engulfed in His presence. Amen. We had the same thing happen in Ethiopia, didn't we? Just, just a few months ago, thousands of people in the meeting, and, and I'd be in my room just praying in the Spirit, and I was engulfed in the Holy Spirit, engulfed in His presence. Got out there to preach, and, and the people broke loose from the, from the ushers. They broke loose. They were running to the front. They were sliding, trying to get to me, sliding under people. They were pulling my arms. They were pulling my legs. I mean, they wanted to get close to the anointing. Yes. Well, am I telling the truth? Yes. And finally, Tony that works for me, Tony Armstrong, who's a former professional football player, I said, Tony, you got to get me out here. They're hurting me. Wow. They're hurting me. And, and he literally picked me up and carried me out of the crowd. And, and uh, when I got back to my room, I was like, a, I was like a, a, a damp washcloth. I was drained. And the Lord said, now you know what I've experienced. You just got thronged tonight. They thronged Jesus, just trying to get close to the anointing. I'm telling you, folks, there are breakthroughs being engulfed in the presence of God, being immersed in God's presence. Well, Brother Jerry, I'm not a preacher. I don't have time to do that. I know lots of preachers that have never experienced it because they don't make time. Well, I'd probably have to get up real early to do that. Duh. Well, I might have to stay up later at night. How bad do you want to be engulfed? How badly do you want to break through? Desperate people take desperate actions. Amen? Are you still with me? Yes. Now, listen to this. I'm just about coming to a close. There are wonderful things that take place when you're engulfed in the presence of God. One of them is this. It stops Satan's attack. Amen. Listen to what Psalm 9.3 from the Passion Translation says. Speaking of God, when you appear, now the translations say, in your presence, my enemies run in retreat. In your presence, my enemies run in retreat. Another translation says, they are stopped and stilled in your presence. The, words, the phrase stopped and stilled means they become motionless and they have become inactive and having no power to resist. That's what happens to Satan when you're engulfed in the presence of God. His, his, his attacks are stopped. He becomes motionless. He becomes unable to act and unable to resist you. Well, what happens when he can't resist you? Breakthrough. <laughs> Breakthrough. Amen. Look at what happened to David in a great trial and how the being in the presence of God brought a major breakthrough. The message translation says, and this is found in 1 Samuel 30, verses 1 through 19, but I won't read all the verses. The message translation says, David and his men arrived back in Ziglag, where the Amalekites had raided and then burned the city down. They captured all the women, children, young and old, and had taken them prisoner. David and his men wept until they were exhausted with weeping. Suddenly, David was, even worse, it was in even worse trouble. There was talk among his men, bitter over the loss of their families, of stoning David. So what did David do? David strengthened himself in God. David strengthened, the King James says, encouraged himself in God. Then David prayed. That's how he encouraged himself in the Lord. David got in the presence of God and said, shall I go after these raiders? 
Can I catch them? God assured him, go after them, yes, and catch them. The King James says, God said, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. God's talking about, you're about to have a major breakthrough. Yeah. David went, he rescued everything, nothing and no one was missing. David recovered the whole lot. The King James says, there was nothing lacking to them, neither small or great, David recovered all. And once again, notice that this all took place, this major breakthrough took place when David got in the presence of God. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? This same David later stated, Psalm 27, 4 from the Passion Translation, there's one thing I crave, the one thing I seek above all else, and that is to live every moment in your house, which means to be in the presence of God. Amen. One thing that I crave after. There's one thing that I seek above all else, to live every moment in your presence. In other words, David knew what it was like to be engulfed in the presence of God, and he was, he was not satisfied until he experienced it again and again and again. Can you say amen? amen. Engulfed in his presence, and I'll close it with this statement. Engulfed in his presence silences all your fears. Engulfed in his presence brings calm to all your storms. Engulfed in his presence changes all your impossibilities to possibilities. I could have been a lawyer. I rest my case. Did you receive that tonight? Give the Lord a good shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand up and uh, why don't we just practice what we preached here for a moment and let's just pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. I know it's getting late. Uh, we'll, we'll release you here in just a few moments, but I think it'd be worthwhile for you to get in the presence of God before you leave. So just pray in the spirit and welcome the presence of God as you pray in the spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Uh, John, come right here. Eric, come right here. Do we have two microphones? Would you give one of these men, each one of these men a microphone? You begin, John, and just lead them in praying in the Spirit, and then you, you follow after he. Just... Pray in the spirit. Shombrendasto from o combre bacala grondeshe. Cambrandro de bregesto brancala proste frekini. Ela da buro boko para. Cambrando shobroto lo crosta cramala trendende. E bosho comprendisto brondre. Rebrambro crocheste fracaste que no tenemo sombro boko ste prevekita. Comprendoste dimas quando lo proste prende de chi. Tanto la corre de si televico. Vado a correre da sito. Il bacando gocio con pronto lo resti che prete anche lo prote. Hamba sciondre se chiamano. Ombre sta ma casa coi. O me se chi ne mando un boste chi va a sorprendere. Embrosta camera satra. Lo bacato lo bacato lo bacato io. Ora bacato lo bacato. Continue, continue. Cara te si te bacato. Para do corpo amasso, roste te che porque te amo comprar macato. Para de levar o corpo a baco por isto. Nana não nos singere de este prebe o corpo a comprar macato. Ora o corpo a comprar mo contra o macato. Ora de se comprar macato. Me de de pe que provoca. Hoje que vai te chamar. Give it to Pastor. Come. Come on, Let us in the prayer. <laughs> 
Bonner was she for a bacote, a bassi for a bacote, or a caterabasa for a bacote, or a Come on, pray in the spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You know, a song's about welcome, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Do you have any idea how many churches this would not be allowed in? And I'm talking about full gospel churches. Yeah. But this is not one of those churches. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands and let's sing this out together. And grace, thou art welcome in this place. Yes, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place, omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. If there's anyone in here tonight, and you've not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you haven't experienced the wonderful gift of being able to pray in the Spirit, speak with other tongues, I would not go another night without it. So while we're singing this, if you want it, come on up here. It's available to you. Hallelujah. Come on up while we're singing again. Omnipotent Father Thank you, Father. of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Sing it out. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome. somebody as you're singing it again. Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Anyone that had Holy feel? Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father, Art welcome in this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Touch every person with your presence tonight, with your precious Holy Spirit. Give them the wisdom they need, the insights. The ideas, 
the concepts that will position them to experience the greatest breakthroughs they've ever experienced. Lord, I believe I've done what you instructed me to do to prepare them for the fulfillment of the prophetic word for 2024. In Jesus' name, may it be for everyone within the sound of my voice as they meditate upon the principles, as they give themselves wholly unto them, may it be a year of progression, a year of advancement, a year of promotion, and may their highest expectations be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, and we give you praise for it. Hallelujah. 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 Sing it one more time as Pastor comes to close the service out. In this place, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Brother, Brother Jerry has talked on Sunday morning and night about breakthrough again tonight about breakthrough as well as giving us the 2024 word we have received much and uh, I was saying to the Lord this morning uh, the first thing that came out of my spirit when I opened my eyes just came right out of my spirit that's the, that's your spirit you know you should be connected to God while you sleep your spirits are still aware of things when you're sleeping and it just the season of famine is over and the season of breakthrough is here and I just kept saying that but it came out of my spirit that was the Holy Ghost and so in saying that throughout the day I said Lord if there's keys to the breakthrough beyond what he's already shared please have him share that tonight and yet God said don't have lunch I want to talk to you and he gave us I know that might sound simple Oh, it's just the presence of God. Well, yeah, just a, it's, it's everything. It's everything. And it takes time. And the problem, he said, don't be distracted. That's the problem with people today is they're so busy. They're working so hard. They're going so fast. And any little bit of time they have now has come, is got other things on their plate. So I would strongly encourage you, listen again. You're not going to get it all in the first hearing. It's free on our, on our website. Just go and listen to the podcast or to the live stream. You, this, you know, you can listen to audio, video, whatever you want. But listen to it again and, and, and start rearranging your schedule so that you, have, you make time. I know I'm going to have to make some changes because sometimes things are just too busy. The presence of God is more important. Because I love him first, but my, these breakthroughs aren't going to come without that presence. So I'm so grateful, Lord Jesus. Brother Jerry, thank you for listening and for being so obedient today and taking all that time waiting on God and coming with those specifics that we need. And uh, I'm just, I'm full. Who would have thought you could be so full in only four days? It's time to sow now. Ushers, would you help the people? Put your hand up if you need an offering envelope. There's one in the seat pocket in front of you. Put the giving ways up, you know, by check, credit card, e-transfer online. Uh, make your checks out too. Put that other screen up, please. Uh, if it's to the ministry, make it to Promise of Life. We'll give them one check at the end. Uh, it's staying in Canada. It's going to their Canadian office. Your name, the amount, that's it. You'll get a tax receipt at the end of the year. If you'd like to bless brother jerry personally and i hope many of you do then it's cash only u.s canadian uh we would prefer not um you know every other currency known to man sometimes we get pesos or we get uh we'll take british pounds and we'll take euros that's fine no whatever currency you want and we're just going to give all that to him just put personal in the amount that's all you put don't put anything else and we'll just gather that we're just facilitating it's not going through the bank account this is perfectly legal to do the government has already told us we're allowed to do this we're just not allowed to deposit it in the bank account and give you a tax receipt because it's going to him as an individual not to the ministry 
but God told me years ago don't just bless the ministry bless the man we don't just love the ministry are you listening it wasn't just Abraham incorporated it was Abraham uh, uh, we love the man without brother Jerry uh, Jerry's film ministries uh, international would not exist and so take a moment and say, Lord, do you want me to bless him in addition to the ministry? I know a lot of churches don't do that. I probably personally don't care. That's what the Lord told me to do with every guest minister that comes. And I love just handing them a stack of cash. It just makes them smile and it makes me smile. And I believe it makes God smile. And then to go buy something nice for them or their wives and just know that we love them, not just the ministry. Praise God. Uh, we, uh, we, we have sown from our church. Uh, last night, if you weren't here last night, I sent out a, a, an email to the whole congregation with just that short clip at the end of the service. If you got that and you weren't here, please watch that. You really should watch the whole service so you understand why what happened at the end happened. And uh, our, our season of famine is over. The, the devil's back is broken when he prayed. And uh, I just, I'm just, I just can't wait to see what God's about to do. I just can't wait. I'm telling you, I just can't wait to see what God's about to do. This has been truly a life-changing week. And I don't just say that lightly. This has been a life-changing week. And uh, we, we want to show the honor for that. The Bible says those that labor in the word and doctrine are worthy of double honor. That word honor in the Greek means wages, payment, compensation, and salary. It doesn't just mean verbal. Thank you, Brother Jerry. It means show something with substance. So that's what, while you, let me look at me, you should be writing. Is everybody ready? Have you clicked the button or have you sealed the check and you, whatever you're done, are you ready to go? Well, Heavenly Father, as we pass these buckets in a second, I thank you that you bless every giver, multiply it back to them, the seed that they've sown. We thank you, Lord, for the message that has come. We are choosing to be good stewards of it, to be not just hearers, but doers, to listen to these messages again, to write notes, to apply them to our lives, to take this card that we've made the congregation with the prophecy that you gave him that he shared Sunday morning and to say it every day, it is a time for breakthrough. Lord, we thank you for what you've done. We give you all the glory, Jesus, yeah, because you, you're the root of everything. You're the reason for everything, Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you've done in our midst. And we thank you for Brother Jerry. We thank you for Miss Carolyn. We thank you, Lord, for his daughters and for his staff and for his church and for his international works and the, and the offices around the world and his offices in Crowley, Texas. Lord, we thank you for them. We want to help him go further and faster to preach the gospel. We want to show honor for what he's done, what you've used him to do in laboring amongst us this last four days. And so we thank you, Lord, uh, in Jesus' name that we sow now in faith, we sow in joy, cheerfully. We're not pressured to do it we love to do it it's our great privilege to do it and we thank you we will see a harvest on this seed in Jesus name amen pass those buckets smile as you give don't forget if you didn't get a card that looks like this put that card up on the screen please if you didn't get a card it's at the info center so go and grab one put it on take a picture put it on your phone put it on your refrigerator yes sir I sorry I didn't see you I overlooked. Uh, when I before I closed a word from the Lord today at 206. Please, please. Engulfed in my presence, that's the key for finding the solutions that bring victory. Let not your own, lean not to your own understanding you, when you know not what to do. Get in my presence and I'll reveal it to you. Don't be in such a hurry. Make time for me. I've got the answers that will set you free. In your time of trouble, I'm here for you. I can I'm hardly reading my own writing. I was writing so fast. I'm here for you. Oh, and what you're facing is not impossible. I know what to do. Remember, I'm with you and I won't let you fail. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you will prevail. Your breakthrough is coming. I'll say it again. So lift up a great shout. You're about to win. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Father, we receive it, Lord. Hallelujah. 
I'm glad I'm glad he interrupted and, and, and read that. So now we have it on the recording and now we can transcribe that and we can add that to our confession. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, no matter what you've been going through, it's something's changed in the spirit. If you're, if you're, if you know, there are a lot of people in our congregation, not all of them unfortunately come because they work or whatever the reason is, but uh, whether you're watching or whether you're in person, you can take this. Not, I'm not going to say not everybody will because I believe that everybody will, but historically not everybody does because they're busy and distracted. But if your heart's right and you're hungry and you're really serious about a breakthrough, if you'll just listen to these services again, meditate on it, turn the social media off for a few days. Turn the television off and just meditate on what has been shared and start to live it and start to say it and start to meditate on it and give yourself wholly to it. Your profit will be noticed to everybody. And that's going to happen corporately and it's going to happen privately. So amen. Praise God. Did you pass the buckets? You did already? Your cards are at the info center if you need. If you didn't get one, go get one. Praise God. We love you. Thank you for being faithful and coming to church. The crowd has been good. We will be back. To, now, don't, don't backslide now. We're being back. <laughs> tomorrow night is our midweek regular service, so we will see you tomorrow night at 730. It's going to be a great service. We love you. God bless you. And you are dismissed. Thank you so much. Be blessed.